I don't know how Miss Harvey talked me into it. I don't know how she knew I danced at all. Unless my mom told her. I didn't want to, but I kept my word to Miss Harvey. I danced in the concert. I leapt and swept my way to the fountain of view, separated on stage from those lint tight white girls. And I kept my head high. Only Esther, that funny talking kid from New York. Only Esther didn't mind me being colored. Daddy says that this is the high holidays and I do need to come with him to temple to have deep thinkings and talkings with God. But I have talkings to God and deep thinkings every day. Still, I will go with Daddy, even if I can't go fishing at temple. We sat squeezed together for some time. Myself and Esther using our bodies to help thaw out that scrawny brown skinned girl. While we were sitting there, I looked behind us and saw a shadow flickering on the wall, thrown there by the light of the kerosene lamp. We were all the same color on that wall, just our soul showing. As that car drove off into the night, I, I couldn't help but wonder why it was that I had chosen the chipped cup to give to Leonora Sutter. I felt ashamed. Because of the laugh that came through our window, and because of Jerry's going away, and the cross that burned, Sarah Chickadee did feel afraid this morning. Afraid to go out and do her milkings, and her deliverings of her creams and butters. I did come with her to help her not be so afraid, but because I did not have my friend Jerry, I did have to tell my feet every time to make one step and one step more. My feet did feel so lonely. I could have saved that kid. I saw it too, the train tearing along the tracks, but I didn't run like that colored girl did. I, I didn't try. Something was keeping me in my place. I went and put that colored girl in the paper. Call her a hero just because she saved some kid from getting hit by a train. A Jew kid. Everything in this town is turned upside down. Leonora. The scoundrels who write unsigned letters, who hide under hoods and robes and say they know right from wrong, who's American and who's not, they're the ones who don't belong. One day soon, the ordinary, sensible folks who live in this town are going to see through the lies and tell them to pack up their poison and go. All they've been talking about lately is this rich boy in Chicago named Bobby Franks. He got kidnapped, and the kidnappers wanted $10,000 from the boy's dad. But it turns out that Bobby Franks is already dead, because the kidnappers put him with a chisel. That boy was 14, just like me. He was rich, and he was white, and now he's dead. And should we, the good citizens of Revelation Falls, Trust these men? Men who work in the dark wearing hoods and masks. Men who burn crosses at night and harass those among us that they do not consider to be 100% American. What'll come of it? Where will this lead us?